The need to replace the condenser when replacing a failed compressor on later model vehicles has been recommended for several years. Generally, a 2000 model or later vehicle will have some style of multi-flow or parallel flow condenser. The piccolo tube style used by Ford may have 30 to 40 6 mm diameter tubes in two rows that are grouped into manifolds 10 to 12 at a time. The grouping of these into manifolds prevents the effective flushing of these condensers by technicians. The parallel flow design attaches 20 to 40 flat tubes to zoned header pipes that direct the refrigerant back and forth across the condenser three to four times before exiting. These flat tubes may contain 10 to 18 passages that can be less than one millimeter diameter. The result is 400 to 600 extremely small passages that can stop up from debris coming from the failing compressor, restricting refrigerant flow, causing high head pressure, and further damaging the compressor. This restriction cannot be flushed out and failure to replace the condenser may cause the replacement compressor to fail quickly. The high head pressure caused by the restriction may not be evident if the high side charging port is located between the condenser and evaporator. The condenser efficiency, however, can be determined by temperature testing. A parallel flow condenser will have a temperature change of 35 to 50 degrees from inlet to outlet. Temperature change over 60 degrees will indicate a restricted condenser that must be replaced. Once the decision has been made to replace the condenser with the compressor and flush the remainder of the system, special attention must be given to any differences in tube size and with tube count between the original condenser and the replacement condenser. The factory refrigerant charge cannot be used if there's any differences between the two condensers. Condenser manufacturers make their condensers to the external dimensions of the original equipment, but may vary tube count and size based on their own processes. This will likely replace the older piccolo type with a parallel flow design. The technician will be responsible for determining the proper charge for the repaired system. A smaller condenser in terms of tube quantity and tube size will require less charge. If the factory recommended charge is used in a smaller condenser, Liquid refrigerant will back up in the condenser from the bottom, reducing the available area for heat transfer or condensation to occur. The older the system, the more dramatic the difference may be. Temperature testing is the best method to determine the correct charge level. The technician's goal will be to maximize the temperature drop across the condenser, trying to achieve a 40 to 50 degree change while producing the coldest temperature from the evaporator. As the technician reduces the charge level from the factory charge, testing the evaporator is different on orifice tube and expansion valve systems. With orifice tube systems, it's imperative the evaporator remain flooded with liquid refrigerant. This occurs when the temperature on the line behind the orifice tube and the temperature on the line coming out of the evaporator before the accumulator is the same or within two degrees of one another. On expansion valve systems, the suction line coming out of the firewall should be monitored while the refrigerant charge is reduced to achieve the coldest temperature possible. The center dash vent temperature can also be used for this function. When considering parallel flow condenser performance, the following rules apply. 30 to 50 degree normal operation, 60 degree and higher internal restriction, 25 degrees and less system overcharged or poor airflow across the condenser radiator.